China, like many other developed countries, is struggling to balance economic development with environmental protection. A new technology that allows for the capture and storage of carbon emissions may make it easier to achieve this balance. Chanview has more details. Air pollution has been a sensitive issue in China over the last year or so, with poor air quality readings and pervasive smog in some cities leading to massive public outcry. The pollution is largely the result of China's breakneck economic growth. It is the world's largest developing country and one of the largest emitters of carbon. However, authorities are trying to push for ways to control the smog while allowing for continued growth. Carbon capture and storage technology is one of the newest tools being used to address this challenge. Here at the Shanghai Shidongko Power Plant, coal is used to generate electricity. Plant engineers are aware that the coal the plant burns is the main cause of the area's high air pollution readings, and are using a process called chemical absorption to try and soften the plant's blow to the environment. I'm standing in the plant's carbon dioxide supply area. The carbon-rich smoke that comes from burning coal comes out of simple distillation equipment. It is then diverted here, where chemicals are used to extract carbon from the smoke. The purity of the carbon is important. As extremely pure carbon can be reused in other industries, the carbon being extracted at the plant can be further purified to 99.997 percent purity, enough for reuse. The plant operates for about 8,000 hours annually, capturing 120,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. There are a myriad of ways to consume the captured carbon. It can be used by welders in the ship making industry. Hospitals can also use it to freeze things. The plant's carbon captures account for four fifths of the total carbon captured by plants in Shanghai annually. The carbon can be sold nationwide, not only in Shanghai. However, only a fraction of the carbon emitted by power plants nationwide is currently being captured. The speed of consumption has yet to reach the speed of emission. Therefore, storage is becoming an important part of the carbon capture process. Dry ice production is a temporary solution. Only deep burying can allow us to eliminate carbon dioxide in large quantities. Utilizing it as a renewable resource only allows for limited consumption. The largest obstacle for carbon capture and storage is the cost. The Huanang Group spent 26.26 million U.S. dollars to build carbon capture facilities at the Shidong Coal Plant. The process also creates pressure on other resources. As it takes 90 kilowatt hours of electricity to capture just one ton of carbon dioxide, such problems are not limited to China. In May 2012, an EU-subsidized carbon capture power plant went into operation in Mongstad, Norway. It can capture 100,000 tons of carbon annually. However, other similar projects in Europe have been halted due to the continent's faltering economy. Technological know-how is another challenge in China. It's only a pilot project. Carbon capturing accounts for relatively little compared with the total emissions. The technology needed to expand carbon capturing to a larger scale commercial level isn't there yet. There are currently 24 carbon capture projects in operation or being planned in the U.S. There are another 24 projects underway in the EU, while China has 11 such projects. China has pledged to cut its carbon dioxide emissions per unit of GDP by 40 to 45 percent by 2020 in comparison to 2005 levels.